It is so important to understand this. If you want to influence and help people, here's the key. Success is a doing. You've got to actually do it. Activity is high priority in the life process to try to get maximum benefit out of what we have available. Activity. Now here's an important question. What is your philosophy about activity? What about hard work? What about long hours? What about full days? If you're doing something, how hard should you go at it? How much time should you put in? Everybody has to develop their philosophy about activity. Just by way of review, let me quote you Old Testament says, six days activity, one day rest. That's called philosophy of ratio of activity. What is a good ratio of rest and activity? Old Testament says, six days of one, one day of the other. You say, well, that's kind of old and outmoded. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. Maybe that's too old a philosophy. The old six one. Now we've got it down to five and two, maybe five and two is okay, I don't know. If God would have thought of five and two, he might have made it five and two. But we've all got to have a philosophy about activity. Because your philosophy of activity will affect the rest of your life. Not to think so is naive. I've got a good clue on rest. Make rest a necessity, not an objective. The reason for life is enterprise. The reason for life is productivity. The reason for life is to see what we can do with the seasons and the chances and our mind and our spirit, ourselves, to see what we can do. That's what life is all about, to see what you can do. Now the doing, you've got to have a philosophy on how much time you're going to spend doing. And I've decided that enterprise is better than ease. If you rest too long, the weeds take the garden in the summer. So you can't rest too long. Life doesn't stand still, and the threat of life will start overwhelming the values of life if you just let it go. So we've all got to have a philosophy about activity. Let me give you one of the best I know. Here's what it says. An ancient phrase says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. That's a philosophy. You say, well, I'm getting by with half my might. Well, okay, but you've got to decide on your own personal philosophy of activity. Now this philosophy says, do it with all your might. Do you think there's any value or virtue in that? Well, I don't know, you've got to decide, you've got to weigh this out, right? You've got to evaluate it for yourself and put it on your own mental scales and you've got to come up with your own answers. How hard should you work? I'm teaching kids now the ant philosophy, the ant philosophy. An ancient story says everybody should study ants, especially lazy people. The ant philosophy, let me give it to you, it's very brief. Number one, ants never quit. Good philosophy. If they're headed somewhere, you try to stop them, they'll look for another way. They'll climb over, they'll climb under, they'll climb around, they keep looking for another way. What a neat philosophy. Never quit looking for a way to get where you're supposed to go. Number two, ants think winter all summer. That's an important philosophy. You can't be so naive as to think summer all summer. You say, well, isn't it nice? You can't think nice when it's nice. We will call you naive. An ancient story says, don't build your house on the sand in the summer. Why would we be given that advice? Because it's easy to build your house on the sand in the summer, but you must not be so disillusioned. So ants are smart. They think winter all summer. In the summer, you got to think storm. You got to think rock. You can't think sand and sun. Number three, ants think summer all winter. That's so important. I'm sure all winter long ants say, this won't last long, we'll soon be out here. What a neat philosophy, what a neat attitude. This won't last long, we'll soon be out of here. First warm day, the ants are out. First warm day, they're out. Now if it turns cold again, they'll dive back down, but first warm day, they're out. They can't wait to get out. What a neat philosophy, can't wait to get at it. We teach in leadership skills. Average people look forward to getting off. Successful people look forward to getting on with it. The guy doesn't want off, he wants on. And that's what starts to transform his life into the doing, into the activity. Now here's the last of the ant philosophy. How much will an ant gather during the summer to prepare for the winter? Answer, all he possibly can. What an incredible philosophy, the all you possibly can philosophy. How much should you do? You gotta come up with a philosophy of how much should you do? We're all governed by our thinking, 
our evaluation, what we've decided and how we feel, and this is a big question. What should you do? Shelf gave me the best answer when I was 25 years old. Here's what he said. Do all you can. How many books should you read in the next six months? As many as you can fit in to your schedule. Because the book you miss won't help. What if a guy missed the book, Think and Grow Rich? The guy's 40 and poor and he missed the book. He lived in the right country, but he missed the book. He was a nice guy, but he missed the book. He was very sincere, but he missed the book. He worked hard, but he missed the book. I'm telling you, if you miss the book, no telling what treasure will be missing in your life if you just miss the book. How hard should you work? The Ant Philosophy. The man says to me, I'm making about $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? Now, what would be your philosophical answer to someone who says, I'm making $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? He said, my kids are doing okay. And he said, I got my bills paid. So what would you say if a guy says, I'm making $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? I said, yes, $50,000 a year is enough if it's the best you can do. We don't call enough an amount. We only call enough your best. If you're capable of making a half million dollars a year and you make $50,000 a year, we call you loser. Now, it isn't the difference between 50,000 and a half a million that's important. What's important is the full extent of your reach. That's what's important. The only way to feel maximum good about yourself is to extend yourself to the full capacity of your reach, your intellectual reach and your physical reach and your potential and your possibility to do the best you can. What should you do? All you can. How many books should you read? As many as you can. How many skills should you learn? As many skills as you can. How many people should you touch? As many as you can. What all should you engage in? As many things as you can. Why not go to the max? I've got a good question for you. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Did you ever hear of a tree growing half as high as it could? No. <laughs> Trees don't grow half. They grow all full. They drive their roots as deep as they can, stretch as high as they can, produce every leaf they can. Trees go to the max. Now, why would human beings settle for less than the max of their capacity? Simple answer. They have the power of choice to do so. It gives us the dignity of being human beings called the power of choice. So we've got a couple of choices. Let me give them to you. Here they are. To be all or to be part. Now, this is a philosophical discussion. You can choose to be less than you were designed to be or you can choose to be all you were designed to be. I'm merely suggesting that you ponder what the all might do for your life in the next one year, three years, five years. If you refined your philosophy of activity and went for it all. So the difference in value is not the amount. If you do the best you can and you make $10,000 a year, we call that enough. If you do the best you can and you make a million dollars a year, we call that enough. Enough is not the difference between 10,000 and a million. Enough is simply doing the best you can. A group of psychiatrists invited me to come and lecture in Los Angeles. Not too long ago, I thought that was fascinating. I never graduated from college, but they wanted to hear my story. So I go talk to the psychiatrist. Then in the middle of my talk, I had the audacity to say, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I think most messes with the mind. They said, what do you think most messes with the mind? I said, I think it is simply doing less than you can messes with the mind. It causes all kinds of psychic damage, I think. Simply being less than you can be, doing less than you could do, trying less than you could try, doing it with less enthusiasm than you could. I think it somehow damages the mind. It damages our self-image. Because here's what I've discovered happens. The minute you turn this around and start extending yourself, it isn't the value you get from extending yourself that's the greatest value. It's how you feel about yourself that's the greatest value. Because see, it's not what we get that makes us valuable. It's what we become. And part of becoming is to see what all you can become. See what all you can do. See how much you can earn, how much you can share how much you can start, how far you can reach, how far you can extend your influence. Now, that kind of commitment to philosophical thinking about attitude and about activity, we call this the potential for life change.